It is June 26th, 11 o'clock in my studio. So welcome. Um, I want to share with you today a little bit about what I'm working on. And we get a lot of questions every week. And so I thought one of the most common questions that I get, I'm going to answer today. So thank you, everybody, as you're hopping on and saying hello. Thank you for joining me. Uh, the question for the week is, uh, how do I, what kind of fabric do you use? Tell me about the fabric. Most questions about collage are, how do I select fabric um, for collage? And really, it is all about the fabric selection. Uh, in order to create, be successful as a collage quilter, you need to know how to select fabric. Now, I can't go into the real depths of fabric selection because we don't have the time. And that involves a lot of color theory and, and understanding color theory and applying color theory to fabric selection. So if you are interested in learning about color theory, according to Emily, there are a couple resources for you. Oh, I have to sneeze. Shoot, this is the problem with live videos. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry. <laughs> um, so if you want to know about my color theory and, and how I think of color, you can attend one of my retreats or one of my workshops. And my book is a great resource for talking about color theory. So I'm not going to go into that side of it, but I am going to talk a little bit about the surface level of fabric selection. So first of all, the very, very most important thing is to have a wide variety of fabric. And this is the issue that most people, when they're getting started, they really don't have an idea of how much fabric I'm talking about. Um, and the best answer for that is more than you think. Always uh, accumulate more than you think. So in order to kind of help you visualize how much fabric you need for each project, I'm in the middle of a little project right now. So I'm working on this koi fish and here's another one right here that I'm working on. My iron is on. I mean, I'm like actively working on this and this will be for an upcoming, this is an upcoming project that I have going on that will be released at a later time. Um, this is just a real small smidgen of the complete design. So um, to show you how much fabric I'm talking, I thought, well, I'll just show you what, what I've pulled for these fish. So the fish are orange and white, right? Generally speaking, it's orange and white. And so, but I need a good spectrum. And so... The amount of fabric that I have, if I slide this over here, get that out of the way, and just show you the orange that I have pulled. Now, here's the other thing. Not all of the fabric that I pull for a project ends up in the project. I always pull, pull more fabric than what I will probably end up using, but again that's that's my this is my palette and i would rather have more variety than uh, be in need of fabric so i'm just going to show you the just the orange pieces that i have pulled and then i will let amelia count how many pieces this is so let's see if i can even begin to show you how much fabric I have without dropping all of it. So it's a really, really wide variety of orange fabric and it's gonna start falling all over the floor. So I'm gonna give that to Amelia and she's going to count. And then I've got the same thing going on with the variety of white fabric. And you'll also see that I've got some light blue fabric and some gray i have a little bit of purple i have some teal so those are pieces that i pulled to work with the white um 
because I want to have, a, again, a wide spectrum to help me create the shadows that I need to. And blue is, these light blue colors are a perfect, um, they're, they will provide the perfect tone that I need for a shadow in anything that's white on the fish. And the other great thing about it, it's gonna look great because blue and orange are opposite colors. And so those are gonna look really good together. Um, so again, there's a lot of color theory behind all of this. Amelia, did you get the 40? Oh my gosh. So Amelia just counted the amount of fabric that I pulled for this fish this orange fish that is this size. And I have, I pulled 40 pieces of orange fabric. So that was my, that was my palette, my spectrum. Um, obviously I don't have 40 pieces of fabric, distinct orange fabric in here, but it gives me a really good, um, a good variety. Uh, so anyway, there you go. Lesson number one, always have, get more fabric than you think you're going to need. For a fish this size, I could have been like, oh yeah, Lynn, ought to do it, right? Funny though, isn't it? Like pull more than you think you're gonna need. So if you ever end up coming to a class with me, um, that's, that is probably the number one issue. It's really hard for people to understand um, that they, the quantity of fabric that they need, try as I might to say, bring a ton of fabric, bring more than you think. Um, there's always more, you can always add more. Um, okay. So then the next thing I would say about fabric, um, what was the rest of that question, Amelia, that she asked? Oh, the type of fabric. Um, so another kind of interesting thing about the fabric that I use, I, uh, love to mix batiks with prints. Um, I don't use solids. I never, or very rarely don't never say never, but I very rarely use solid pieces in a uh, collage. I just love to see the interaction between, um, I love to see the interaction of different prints. And if I need something that's a really strong dark color or something, um, I will use a batik that reads more like a solid, but it still has some movement. So I'm gonna hold this up and hopefully you can see that. Okay, the variety of fabric that I have in there. It, it just makes it look so, um, sophisticated to have a wide variety of fabric in a collage. So I don't use solids, surprise, surprise. Um, and there are a few things that I do, um, stay away from. Now, here's the other thing, Emily, I always break my own rules. Well, not always, <laughs> never use definites, never say never, never say always. <laughs> um, I on occasion will break my own rules, but my rule of thumb generally is I'll show you some examples of what I don't use. Um, this is a type of print that I would not use in a collage, except in a very, I may use it, but I wouldn't buy this fabric for collage. For two reasons. Number one, it's a really strong uh, grid pattern. Um, very, the lines are very straight in this. Um, the other reason that I wouldn't use this is that it's a high contrast fabric. So it's got red with white. Anything with red with, you know, red and white is bad. Um, here is a lovely fabric, but it's not one that I would generally use again, because it's high contrast and the motifs are rather large scale. Um, this is a fun fabric though. I think if I wanted to paint on it or use my ink tints. So I believe a customer sent this to me or gave it to me for that purpose. And I think eventually I would love to, to play with that. So, um, again, here's another example of something that I wouldn't 
I, I am careful about incorporating into a collage because of the strong uh, directional geometric sort of design and it's uh, high contrast. Um, when you have really high contrast, it's going to really stick out. And that's what directional prints do. They will stick out in a collage. So um, that's kind of the little tidbit of information that I want to give you about fabric selection. And um, is there anything else, Amelia, that I should say about fabric selection? I mean, I could keep talking for an hour, but this is a batiks. little tidbit. Yes, use batiks. I love batiks. But not only batiks. But not only batiks. If I, I, I really, really get bored of a collage that's only in batiks. I know batiks have fantastic colors, but man, that can make for a really boring collage. Um, so try pushing your, try stepping out of your comfort zone and selecting fabric that you wouldn't normally uh, select. Again, I'm going to say this is part of the reason that I sell my own fabric bundles that have been curated because I select all those pieces of fabric that go into each bundle. Each bundle contains batiks as well as prints and runs the spectrum from light to dark as well as warm to cool. Um, and there are a few other things that I look for when I'm curating fabric bundles. So those are a good be a good way to build up your stash and get a good um, a good uh, start and a good variety. Okay, so um, Debbie just asked a great question and she said, do you ever turn the fabric over and use the reverse? Absolutely, yes. So sometimes if there's a color that's really hard to get, for example, um, flesh tone colors on my adoration were hard for me to find. And and I found that flipping the, the, the fabric over on a, on a salmon color um, printed, a salmon a printed sort of salmon colored design seemed to be the perfect color that I was looking for. So, okay, somebody, to, Dorothy just said, more is always better. I have never regretted buying fabric, but there's a bunch of fabric that I regret not buying. I love that, that is so true. We never regret buying fabric, right? And even if I keep it in my stash for 10 years, um, if it's something that I bought because I love, I know that it's there and I will still love it 10 years later. And that's what happened with the chinoiserie pot. I bought this fabric because I loved it and didn't use it, didn't use it, didn't use it, had, didn't have a place for it. And then all of a sudden I did this design and I'm like, ah, this is perfect. So, um, okie dokie, let me just kind of go through. Oh, Pam just asked a good question. Pam Varnell asked, does Amelia collage too? Amelia, you want to answer that? Um, I, I have, but I don't. <laughs> Why don't you? Doing other things. Such as? Responding to emails. <laughs> <laughs> so Amelia doesn't spend as much time as she would like or I would like, um, but Amelia did do a quilt recently so she's amelia comes at it from you know she was trained in art and design and uh she when she started working for me she wasn't she didn't consider herself a, of herself a quilter in fact she didn't like a lot of quilts and um i think she's starting to really well she really appreciates quilts now and she has done collage before and she is learning how to sew and she made a beautiful quilt. Um, now her next thing is she's going to learn how to do ruler work on the machine. Is that right, Amelia? Yeah. Okay. So Amelia's going to learn to do some ruler work. Okay. Um, Sandra just asked, hello from Texas. How do I find out about classes? Classes for beginner beginners. Fabric is not an issue. I have an addiction. Good. Glad to hear it. Um, so my classes, I, um, what I write, and we get this, we get this question a lot. How do I get started? Where do I learn? How do I begin? Um, we offer, we have a YouTube channel. A lot of you are watching on YouTube right now. Um, and all of these videos are a good resource, I think, to, for getting started. But if you want to dive a little bit deeper, 
number one, I do recommend looking at my book, checking out my book. Amelia, would you grab it so I can just show what it looks like? Um, so that is the number one resource. Um, as far as classes, I do travel and teach around the country just a little bit. Um, I have been to events hosted by uh, Road to California, um, AQS, Mancuso. So, um, and I teach a, an annual retreat here in Utah. And this year's retreat is up at uh, the Waldorf Astoria in Park City. It's sold out, it's in October, and we will be announcing next year's retreat um probably in the fall i'd say do you think yeah i haven't even thought about that yeah we've got to get we've got to get planning on that um anyway so and then for next year my I, i'm well i'll okay so my son is a senior in high school this fall and he'll be graduating next year and he wants to be serving a mission for our church next year and he'll be gone for two years so i'm being super protective of my time in the first half of 2024 so i will be doing very few uh teaching workshops um but then once he's gone then we'll pick up again you can always find my events calendar on my website. There's a little tab at the very top of the website um, under events and it's got my calendar. So I, and I, I do um, also do trunk shows, virtual trunk shows for a uh, quilt guild. So I do that quite a bit. So you'll see that's what that is. Um, that's that. So here's the book. This is the number one resource that I recommend if you don't have it and you're a beginner and you would like to get started. So while I have this on, um, back to that question, how do I get started? What's a good beginner pattern? Um, this project that's in here is actually a really good beginner project. It's the teacup quilt. Now, do you mind coming and showing the teacup quilt? We pulled this out a couple days ago and we were both like, ah, that's so cute. I haven't looked at it for a long time. So yeah, that looks great. So here's the teacup quilt. This is a really good beginner pattern for doing a little bit of collage. It's very manageable. You can make it any size you want. And that is the templates are in the book. So that is that. Let's see here. Um, Annie asked, do you recommend a light box besides daylight, besides the daylight? The one that we sell on our website is the daylight one. Um, and that's the one I rec recommend because that's the one I use. I have used less expensive light boxes and I find that they don't last. They're not great. They're not worth it. So this is, seems to be one of those things that um, sometimes you get what you pay for. And I use my light box all the time. I want it to work. I don't want it to break. So that's the brand that I use. Um, let's see here. Uh, Janice asked a question. She said, I could not find the pot holder patterns on the website. They're actually not on my website. Um, I'm a Bernina ambassador and they are on the, we also blog. That's the Bernina blog. So if you're looking for the pattern and templates for the pot holder and the tutorial for the pot holders, that's on the, we also blog. Okay. Let's see here. Um, I'm just going to go up and make sure I haven't missed any questions. Uh, Amelia, you start from the top, would you? And, and we'll meet in the middle and rooster see if we can. Shipping. Oh, rooster shipping. Yeah, let me give you the latest update. So the rooster shipment has arrived in port in Long Beach. I now have my, who will be unloading it and delivering it to us. So we are very hopeful that it will be arriving next week. Fingers crossed, right? Uh, we can't wait to start getting that out. So um, um, I was going to say along the line of announcements, uh -huh. orders place anytime next week okay. will not be shipped until Monday. The, what is that? Okay, Monday that's right. 
Okay, great. So Amelia just reminded me, we are going to be on a family vacation all of next week. So from Monday, July, is that the third? Monday, July 3rd third through, the seventh. through the 7th, we will be out of town. We won't be delivering anything. We won't be shipping anything. Um, so, and we'll have a little banner on our website. We need to make sure we, we get that. But if you order anything uh, next week, it won't be fulfilled until the following week. What's the date? The, the 10th. The 10th. So starting July 10th, we will start getting um, orders out. We okay. also will Thank not you. be doing any more videos the month of July until the 24th, I believe. Okay. Is what it is. That's a really good thing too. So let me remind you, we are taking the month off, uh, the month of July off on videos. So no more, no videos will be released on Mondays um, until July 24th. Is that there? Hopefully. Okay. So we're hoping to start to announce the quilt along and the dates um, at the end of the, uh, the end of July. And that's when we'll start doing our videos again. There's a deer running along the road. Oh, there's two, two of them. Little baby buck oh. and his sister. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of fun. I live right by the mountains. Lucky me. Oh, I almost got trampled by a moose over the weekend. That was exciting. I was mountain biking uh, just up a trail out from my house. And it's just in this beautiful alpine setting with the river just rushing down and very wooded. We were going up the trail, my friend and I, and we were talking as we were going. We must have startled this mama moose. She was gigantic. And off to our right side, she just goes crashing through the trees. It scared us to death. She was probably 10 feet away from us. Anyway, so kind of fun. Uh, okay, let's see if there are any other questions. Is your cat cactus collage template available? Cactus collage template. Uh, the cactus has been retired, so we do not have a cactus available anymore. Uh, let's see here. I am looking at are the roosters a quilt along. The roosters will be a quilt along, yes. And we have been, the reason we're not doing any more videos is because we are videotaped out. <laughs> We've been working, filming, 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 filming video tutorials for the quilt along. We will have live videos as well, but as I was making the quilt, I wanted to make sure that I videotaped along the process so that you have um, actual footage of everything as it's happening. So we will be announcing the quilt along in July, but we want to make sure that everybody has a chance to receive it. So as soon as it arrives, um, we'll be we'll be getting it out. Hopefully by July 10th, we'll start shipping. Oh, fingers crossed. I can't wait. I apologize that it has taken so long. Okay, let's see here if there are any other questions. Looks like everybody's enjoying a really toasty summer so far. Um, it is starting to get toasty here in Utah too. Okay, well, I think that's about it, you guys. And I've been talking now for almost 30 minutes. So, oh, somebody had a, her daughter-in-law had a face-off with a moose in Anchorage, Alaska. Wow, scary. They can be mean. Um, Christina just asked, how does one get started? Okay, here is my best advice. Get my book on collagequilter.com and start from there. It's going to go through color theory. It's going to teach you my methods and the products to use. And then you've got these little templates that you can make some projects with. So that's the number one thing. You can also look at my YouTube videos anytime. And another great way to get started would be to follow along or participate in the quilt along. And uh, so we'll have more details about that coming up very soon. And I hope this video has been helpful. Thank you so much for um, joining me. I will see you again in a couple weeks and have a happy 4th of July, everybody. Okay, take